Guy said it's a MSRP of 133,000 uh, and they're going to offer it to my friend for the low, low price of 89,999. Um, so that's already a pretty substantial discount there. What I'm doing the math in my head, but it's, it's getting close to like a 35, 40% haircut that they're putting on MSRP right now. Um, and again, this knife may still be falling. So it may, it may still have a lot further to fall from here. Well, yeah, at the bottom of the cycle, they'll give you that RV for 50 and they'll throw in a car that you can attach to the back of the RV to take with you. <laughs> Since you're driving your house, you might as well take another car too. So you bring your entire suburban lifestyle with you to wherever you go. Um, and you know that's that's true of all the other big toys. Pickup trucks, only buy pickup trucks at the very bottom of a recession and motorcycles, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and we're nowhere near that yet. We're, we're just starting to take some baby steps in that direction. Uh, so when this really gets going, it'll be a completely different thing. I, uh, most of your audience probably remembers 2008, 2009, because it was so recent. But that was uh, that was apocalyptic for a little while. And based on the numbers, something much worse than that should be coming. So um, when you're thinking about indicators and you're thinking if you're thinking about buying a big toy, Keep that in mind that uh, the, the things are going to get much, much worse as somehow, some way, all of this debt get work, gets worked off. And um, every indicator, is, you know, at the very bottom, every indicator is going to look like end of the world. And the prices of things that people are trying to sell will seem like Great Depression events, you know, where, where these people are going broke and they just have to get rid of something no matter what, just take it away. You know, that that's the way it's going to be. And um, um, you know, the, the RV thing is is kind of that. It's an indicator of that whole thing with a little bit of schadenfreude thrown in because, uh, <laughs> you know, at least this is, again, I'm, I'm talking about my own personal experience here. You know, I, I, I used to feel kind of jealous when I'd see my neighbors buy these 40 foot RVs in the driveway and my kids thought they were so cool and wanted to play in them and everything. And you know, I never felt comfortable owning something like that, but I did feel jealous of the people that did own them. So, so it, it, there's always a kind of a sense of um, of justification when we have a down cycle like this, and uh, and all of those guys have to sell their big giant toys. Yeah, I mean, it's it's you're not. I know what you're talking about. You're not necessarily delighting in someone else's pain, but but you're you're sort of welcoming the return of rationality back to the world, right? Where all right, you know what? We all know we shouldn't be living outside of our means and, you know, spending ridiculous amounts of money for toys that, that uh, you know, it's sort of the land boat, right? I mean, if you own a sailboat, the thing is just a money pit, right? <laughs> and it's not that you shouldn't own sailboats or whatnot, but you shouldn't basically be, you know, overextending the way that people tend to with these toys in the late stage of the cycles and people that are more rationally minded like you and I, it just, you get angry at the fact that, that it, it it works as long as it does for people when we know that it's 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 not sustainable right and then when that sustainability starts re-expressing itself you, there is a little bit of a, okay well thank goodness we're, we're the, the, the world's starting to make sense again yeah that's a better way to put it i'm not taking pleasure in watching this happen to everybody it, it's uh but but it is nice to see a return of sanity i kind of am taking pleasure sometimes in, in watching people who uh, who throw money around like crazy uh get what's coming to them but uh <laughs> all right so um uh you know another kind of related indicator though um is uh like uh the town I used to live in, and even to a certain extent, the town I'm in now, um, there are parts of town that when you go through an economic downturn, um, you people start parking their cars or their RVs even, right, with the big for sale signs on them, right? It, it, it kind of becomes like a de facto used car parking lot, right? But it's just where everybody in town has agreed, okay, this is where we're going to park our stuff during the day to try to sell it, right? And um, I haven't, uh, I, like, I'm beginning to see cars pop up around town with for sale signs on which which when I started to see it it made me realize how long it had been since I had seen them before because we've had this really pretty long stretch of of prosperity um but gosh I mean I remember that the, the last town I used to live in down in, in Palo Alto um 
there's kind of a stretch of El Camino where people do this. And I, I remember during the dot-com bust how, I mean, it was about as far as you could see down the road, just, you know, cars with for sale signs on them because everybody was having to dump, you know, all these expensive cars that they had did overstretched to buy beforehand. I'm beginning to see, like I said, a little bit of that begin to creep in where I am right now. But it's sort of another one of those indicators that just we as regular people, in addition to all the financial data that we see on our screens that we can just look at in our real lives as kind of a barometer for where we are in the story. Yeah, yeah. And, and we're, we're nowhere near the bottom of anything yet. Like like um, you and Wolf Richter were talking about um, a week or so ago, the economy is actually surprisingly strong in a lot of ways, considering all the, uh, the reasons that it, it should be weak. Um, and today they just reported um, the Fed's favorite inflation measure went up. So, so um, inflation is actually accelerating according to that measure. Um, so, you know, we're not in a recession. And a lot of the signs like the, the for sale signs in that parking lot you were talking about are not that plentiful yet. But there are a lot of reasons to think that that day is coming fairly quickly. There's a lot of other indicators that, uh, that are more behind the scenes um, than say for sale signs. Uh, so you don't notice them when um, when they're just kind of bubbling out there and getting ready to work their way in, into the real economy. But a lot of those are uh, are pointing down now at um, a steeper and steeper rate. So I think as um, more and more things roll over, then the uh, the overall picture that most people have of the economy is going to be a lot more negative, and the big numbers are going to reflect that. So I, I think that's the second half of this year's story. And I think it's it's reasonable to predict that by the end of this year we'll be in an in an official recession, and um, the the question will be when does the Fed start cutting interest rates? So okay, we're going to so, go so from yeah. Let, let's let's dig into that, and and I want to I want to just use the jumping off point into that discussion. Um, it's. It's a really weird time right now because, like you said, um, there's a just a ton of, of indicators, you know, leading economic indicators, uh, rising consumer debt, falling savings rate, declining real wages. I mean, we can go through a whole ton of them, um, and I'm sure we're about to talk about a bunch of these macro factors. But at the same time, you've got the stock market up, you know, nine plus percent this year. You've got the Nasdaq up over twenty five percent. You've got NVIDIA up like over 200% since the October lows. <laughs> in fact, we actually have kind of a bubble going on right now in AI stocks. And, and the biggest stocks, the biggest companies that are involved in AI happen to be those like top 10 stocks that, you know, oftentimes referred to as the FANG stocks that are kind of pulling the market indices up with them as they rage right now. And so it's it's a weird time because you can... You can see this euphoric party going on in the markets where they're just pricing in wonderful days ahead of us. But then you can turn and look at all this other data that you just referenced to and say, my God, it looks like we might be going off a cliff later this year. Right. So it's it's just such a weird time right now. I know that a lot of investors are really caught between which do I believe? 